Good afternoon, and we are continuing with our live broadcast from here at the National Results Operations Center, where all eyes are on the leaderboard. But of course, we are still a long way to go in terms of final results. But you know, the picture is beginning to take shape. My name is Masadze Masase. I am the editor in chief of Eyewitness News. We are speaking to political leaders as we are reflecting on. 1st November, which was the big day for voting. You've all voted, well, some of you have voted, and now the IEC is counting those votes, and I understand that political parties have their party agents, they are keeping an eye on that process to make sure that that final result is legitimate. But as the IEC told us earlier, we are expecting it to be quite a long night, and we might be in for another night, or maybe in the evening we might have some, most of the results in by then. So one party that is showing some signs of positivity is the Freedom Front Plus. In 2019, I was sitting here uh, with Voter uh, talking about the performance of the Freedom Front Plus because they were doing quite well and people were surprised. And all indications are that you are doing even better in these local government elections. There are certain areas where we definitely are sustaining the growth and even improving on the growth we showed in 2019. For instance, we won two wards now in Lekwa in uh, um, Pumalanga, which uh, we didn't have before and which we also didn't expect. Um, also a ward in the Western Cape in Otuwaren. Um We won seats in Siederberg. So uh, we are doing quite well and we are quite confident that, uh, especially in the metros in Tuani, we will more than double our votes from 2016. I will come back to that performance in a while, but overall, what has been your impression of the voting process yesterday? We are very, very disappointed, but we did expect a lot of uh, problems because the IEC um, was so sure that the election would be postponed that they didn't do any preparation. They didn't start to train the uh, officials and the uh, volunteers and the uh, presiding officers. And uh, the system that they now introduced, it's actually completely ludicrous that with such a short period and such a uh, complicated election, you experiment with a new system that gave trouble with a registration weekend and once again gave trouble yesterday. A lot of voters were disenfranchised yesterday. They arrived at polling stations where they registered with registration or on registration weekend and then all of a the sudden they did not appear on the voting, uh, voting uh, voters role and that's, that's very, very con uh, disconcerting. What are you blaming those glitches on? Because on the one hand, when we ask the IEC around the voting um, machines, right, the VMDs, they're saying that no, 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 they are not a problem, they were actually working. What are you pr blaming the problem on? Well, to be very honest, uh, it's, it's, it can't be said that there were no problems with the VMDs. Yeah. Many voting stations turned away voters yesterday and they said the system is offline. They shouldn't have done that yes. because you can do it manually, you can use the voters' role, but they did that. Mm. And many people didn't vote then. So is that where you're talking about the training was just not adequate? It's, it's incompetence, it's a lack of training and then there's system errors as well. Because look at the number of voters who registered, who were loaded on the VMDs and yesterday they discovered more than 70,000 voters that weren't populated on the voters' roll. And then they allowed them to vote. But that was after 8 p.m. last night. Where they were now sending them SMSs and calling them and saying, come back, you can actually come and Too vote. Too little time. Yeah. And 60,000 or 70,000 people can make, uh, voters can make a very big difference in a municipal election. You know, uh, we missed uh, a seat in a particular uh, municipality now with 11 votes. Um, I think the DA won a seat, if I, I can't remember where, with one vote. So you can, every vote is really very important because it works with fractions. Yes. So 70,000 voters can make a very big difference between who governs and who does not govern. Especially in an era of hung councils as exactly. well. Exactly. Where one seat can exactly. help the other govern exactly. or not. And how do we correct these? Um, 
you know, I mean, we assume there's a process that happens behind the scenes where the IEC is there, the political parties are represented, and you guys should be talking continuously. As you mm. said, we saw problems with the registration weekend, and then we still went into these elections with the uh, voting machine devices and still saw those problems. The problem with the, with the Electoral Commission mm. is that they don't always listen to us as parties. We do have a voice there, we sit on party liaison committees, but it's not a democracy, um, like some people think. They think we vote on issues there, we don't. We voice our opinion, and sometimes there's consensus. But if there's no consensus, the commission makes a decision. Let me give one example quickly. The online address change system, updating system that came into effect here by 2017, I warned against that system numerous times and said it can be abused because you can use a 10-minute mail email address that can't be traced. You, if I have your ID number, I can change your polling station without you knowing it. And the commission denied it and the CEO denied it. And in this election, it happened. It first happened with the EFF um, councillor who was to be sworn in. And when they wanted to swarm, uh, swear him in, his, um, his place of his municipality was changed without him doing it. We had a candidate who contested the by-election in Ward 44 here in Tuane in May. When the first round of nominations um, came, we couldn't register him as candidate because he was changed to Northwest. He didn't do it himself. So there's a lot of fraud and a lot of problems behind the scenes and we tell the IEC this and that they don't listen. They should start listening. There's a lot of competent officials as well in the IEC and there's a lot of competent commissioners. But they should start listening, they should start planning better and get competent presiding officers who knows the legislation and who doesn't make their own rules because that was a big problem yesterday as well. Let's talk about the Hilo Front Plus and your campaign in this election. It was very different from what we are used to. I mean, we saw you in uh, with black candidates representing the Freedom mm -hmm. Front Plus. We saw you in townships uh, campaigning for the Freedom Front Plus. Also in uh, the Southern Cape, along the Garden Route, we saw you with black candidates there. Was there a decision in the Freedom Front Plus to say that you will go and have more representative representatives? <laughs> Look, I think we had this discussion yeah. in 2019 yeah. as well. And the fact of the matter is, we said we are party for equal opportunities. We have policies, we have principles, and anybody that associates with that can join the party. But people didn't join uh, enthusiastically in the past. We, in 2016, we fielded black candidates, we fielded uh, brown candidates, and, uh, but we didn't do very well and uh, it wasn't at a very large scale. This election, and especially after the 2019 growth, more and more people in different communities are saying, we associate with your manifesto, we associate with what you stand for, and we want real change, but not only change, we want improvement. And that's why they joined us, they volunteered, and they worked very hard to uh, get us growing so that we can get service delivery go going. You're also taking away from the Democratic Alliance. Um, what, what is it around the people that have been supporting the Democratic Alliance that's making them turn to you as an alternative? It's difficult to say. Uh, obviously, we, we did gain support from the Democratic Alliance in 2019. And one of the, the, the things I think a voter does not like is flip-flopping around policy. Either you say you force something or that this is your policy and you stand by it and you don't change uh, back and forth all the time. And I think that's what the Democratic Alliance did, but that's their problem. Um, if you go and look, we gained um, six seats in Parliament, if you just take National Assembly, leave the provincial legislatures, just National Assembly. The DA lost five seats. So we did get votes from somewhere else as well, not only from the Democratic Alliance. And we picked up that a lot of our new vote support, and then let me also say, the Democratic Alliance, some of their voters, some of them that were disgruntled, didn't go and vote. Even in this election, they rather stayed away. So it's not that we got all that support, we got other support as well. And that is people that voted for the last time in 1994, um, that uh, became 
completely disgruntled with the political system and said, what does it help to vote? Um, other younger people that never registered and just now said, especially in 2019 and now again said, that the Freedom Front Plus does offer solutions. Let me this time give them my support. Let me register. And the other thing is a lot of people said the solution might be outside of politics with uh, community organizations mm -hmm. and residents organizations and so forth and they stopped voting but i think people are now on the point to say it's not a or or option it's a and and we need those associations but we also need a political voice in the chambers and that's why they're giving us their voice so are you working with those community organizations because we have a lot of residents associations that have taken municipalities to court because they have failed to perform yes you see one of the big things we also campaigned around and that's in our manifesto is that we can't go on on this route of decline People are suffering, people are not receiving services, they're not receiving value for money, there's no economic growth. And then people take service delivery into their own hands, like what happened in Northwest, uh, to go to court and to say, let's, we will take the rates and taxes, we'll provide the services. But that's not sustainable, because nationally we also contribute to municipalities. When I buy a, a can of Coke, I pay VAT, and that VAT also goes to municipalities. So that means we need a political voice and we need short-term solutions to fill the potholes if a municipality can't do it and doesn't have the money to do it so that we can transport our product and get economic growth going and get job creation going. But we also need a political voice in the long term to uh, stop the decay. In conclusion, we are likely to see more of the Freedom Front Plus represented at municipalities. What, will, what, will, what can we expect with you in some of those neglected councils that are in a state of disrepair? Well, we'll go into there where there's hung councils and where we might be the kingmaker. We'll go in with our manifesto. We'll, for instance, say uh, rather choose the collective executive committee than executive mayor. That's a waste of money and where power is abused and rather vest the power in the collective. That's one of our manifesto so issues. So you're basically saying the mayor doesn't have the powers to decide, but rather there's a collective decision. The, the Structures Act makes provision yes. that a municipality can choose between the two. All the municipalities choose the executive system because it brings about high salaries for mayoral committee members. We say no, give the power to a proportional representative committee, which then only as a chairperson, as mayor, and where the council actually makes decisions and with Will the community. Well, you agree with each other. We've seen disaster with those kind where you don't have a final say in terms of the executive mayor. No, because then council has the final say. And that is, if you really go and look, the collective system does work. It wasn't given a chance because people opted for higher salaries. So and does we that now, mean, yeah, sorry. We need solutions now. We need to think outside the box and we need to get service delivery going by um, bettering oversight. We don't have oversight and we don't have accountability. And that's what we need. So if the DA comes to you and say, let's go into a coalition, will you go into a coalition with them? We will, but we will then say, we are not going to negotiate for positions. Yeah. We're not going to say, give us deputy mayor, then we'll go. We'll say, implement A, B, C and D, then we'll go. And that is what we are going into the uh, coalition negotiations um, with. I'm assuming you'll say no to the ANC. We will because the ANC has had their chance to govern and giving them. People have decided to stay away yesterday, not to vote ANC or to vote for a different party. And if we now give the ANC back that power, we are actually uh, disregarding the voice of the people who is fed up with the decay and the lack of service delivery. Thank you very much. That was Voto Vessels of the Freedom Front Plus joining us here on Eyewitness News. If you look at what uh, the CSIR in particular is predicting, is that they will see some growth. And again, they will be the winners, some of the winners in terms of growing their base in this election and growing uh, uh, seats in, in some of the councils across uh, the country. Of course, ending it there on a conversation around coalition governments because we're expecting more hung municipalities in this election. There were around 27 in 2016 and now all predictions are that there will be many more of those hung coalitions and 
as we've learned, one seat makes a difference in terms of who gets to govern uh, the country. And I think that system of governing at municipalities has been one that many parties have not opted for. And we'll see if they actually get to win and convince political parties to adopt a more collective system of governance. And whether that, if tested, can actually turn around the, the municipalities because we know that the Auditor General paints a very grim picture and many of us experience uh, the failing municipalities, whether it's water not delivered, the roads that are not tarred, and many other things that indicate that some of our cities are really falling apart. We will continue bringing you more as more and more leaders come here at the Elections Results Centre in Twane. That's it for, that's it for now. My name is Mahlatse Mahlatse.